Okay, here's the main reasons why you may not be able to connect up your device to your Windows successfully. We're going to go through each one of these to make sure you can get your uh, camera or your phone connected to Windows 10. Now normally when you plug in your phone or your camera, it should launch an application. Normally it's the photo app. And here you can see where it's connected up my camera. And it automatically launched a program where I can select which pictures to import into the system. The fix may be as simple as changing your USB port. You see here this USB port on the left side of my laptop is a 3.0 port. However, if you look on the other side, on the uh, other side of the laptop, that USB port just says USB. That means it's probably a 2.0, and the camera may or may not recognize it. It may not talk. So simply switch those around. I can't tell you how many USB cables I have, so uh, I like to use the original manufacturer's cable, which is this one with the tag on it. Uh, and it works great with my phone. Other ones uh, may or may not, so you may want to go ahead and instead of using your bargain basement one you got, is try and find a, a different one. Change them out with, while you're changing USB ports to, to see if you can get a combination of work. And many times this simple switching in and out of cables and ports will make everything okay. So next, we're going to go in and check your Windows settings. So we'll go over here to settings, and we'll go over here to devices and click on auto. Now you'll see here that under autoplay, I have three things to connect it up. My phone, OK Geek phone, and the camera. And the settings for each one of those. So depending on what it said, it could say take no action. And you have to reset it here. Okay, do whatever you want. And then that device, do not click on the red X by the way. Either go, go back and change it here. And then use the back button up top where it says system or the devices and uh, do that in order to back out to make sure now you'll notice when I plugged it in this time it opened up the uh, file explorer to the uh, SD card on, on the camera itself and I can look around that way the next thing we're going to do is actually we're going to reset the device drivers and we do that by going up here to the PC and we're going up here to manage now with your device plugged in, it should show up in your hardware list. So if you click here, you'll see the devices. And underneath, removable devices here, you should see the device if it's plugged in and turned on. So if we go here into that area, and we see there that I have my Canon there. Go over here to the Canon Power Shot, or your device, whatever it is. And we can right click on that device and we can say Update Driver Software. When we click on this, we'll have two options. One is for it to go search the internet, and one is to install it from your hard drive. I want to choose to go out to the internet, because I haven't downloaded anything yet, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, but says, oh, it's the best one there, so everything's fine the way it is. Okay, now if we want to get some little more information, we could well, we could try disabling it. And I actually say it won't do any good. And we, we can uninstall it from here. But instead of doing it through this direct method, want to take a look at the properties dialog box instead and if we just go down here to properties and click on it and you'll see we have a few more options some more information available first of all it tells us that where we're at and there we get more information on who made the driver and the daily version of the driver so you can compare that to anything you've downloaded now we can try the same update we did before but that wouldn't do anything but what we want to do is we want to uninstall it but instead of installing it, uninstalling it from here, I'm going to show you, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to show you the way you see the Windows 10 interface, which is the same exact thing. So let's go back to the settings over here. We click on this and we go up to devices. And that's right up here, the second one on your list. And that's printer and scanners here. So we want to go to the next section, which is the, connect, the connected devices. So we go up here to connect it. And there's a list, and sure enough, you'll see my Canon Power Shot office right there. Now you can't do the other thing. All you can do is remove. So let's go ahead and click on the remove device there. And ask you, are you sure? Oh, if 
we look here and we go look at back at the control panel or the manage the devices again if we go back to there and we click on device manager you'll notice if we open up the portable devices it's not there so we go up here to the top and we click on that and we say scan for hardware changes and if your camera's still attached and everything it'll oh there it is it found it and of course it launched the application in my case but it actually shows it there if we go back here, you'll see that it's installing drivers. That's the part I wanted you to see. But it's installing the driver. It's the same drivers that were the best already installed, but at least it shows up on your list. So if you have it in your list, either on the managed devices, uh, on your devices connected devices on Windows 10, or in the control, the computer management console, uh, you're good to go. And you can start playing around with your device here. This is listed down here, uh, and then everything should work. The last thing you want to do, even if it does work here, is check for your your manufacturer of the device on their website for any firmware uh, changes. So let's take a look at that. So what I've done here is I've gone to the Canon website. I went to their support website and I'm typing in the uh, model of my camera here. So if I type in the exact model number on this particular website, I should get the drivers and all that. So let me uh, go ahead and select the ELF, uh, or type in the ELF, that uh, it's a power shot ELF, uh, one, five, there it is. So I'll click on this, and you'll see that if I go down here, it automatically detected I had Windows 10, first of all. Okay. And the next thing I want to look at is, it's already downloaded drivers. We did that during that step on a computer. So the drivers are good. Besides, there are no new for ones anyways. So you can't do anything there. But you also want to check is the firmware. Since we're on Windows 64, it compares each one of these. So if I click on firmware, there is no firmware for this particular camera. So I'm good to go. It should be working. There's no new software nor firmware to update the chipset inside your device. Now I went off to the uh, Nikon website and I found their firmware update. It's directly accessible here through their service and support. And you notice it has a long list of all your cameras. It immediately tells you whether or not there's a, a firmware that's really good, which I like a lot. So I'm looking at this particular one model or list of models here under the, uh, the Coolpix brand. And I go down here and I can immediately update uh, or download the firmware if it's available. If you notice, I click here, it goes to the website. And then there, in this particular case, there's a link right here to click on it. And it will go ahead and do the download of the firmware. By the way, the Nikon site's really nice. It gives you very specific instructions on what to do and how to do it. So, uh, right here, if you click over here, uh, that's the date of release, by the way, so it'll tell you a little bit about whether or not, when you bought your camera, if you had it, the latest version or not. But if you click on the View Download page, which is, again, very nice from Nikon, it tells you exactly how to do it, how to verify the firmware. A lot of it's a quick install, a lot of information about how to correctly do it. Be careful on doing firmware updates. Update the hardware in your camera. If you shut it off with a bad battery in the middle, you may end up with a dead camera that can't be restored. It's just like a computer firmware update. You have to make sure that you have power while you're doing the update, and I'll tell you all about that during this installation uh, description here. So uh, follow these very, very, uh, very closely to make sure. By the way, just because Windows 10 doesn't show up, it doesn't mean it won't run under Windows 10. It just means they verified the software to update your camera on other versions. So by following these steps, you should see either a photo app come up or a directory uh, showing you the SD card on your phone or camera. By following these instructions, you should get just about every device, unless it's really old, to work with uh, Windows 10. Actually, the same stuff will work with uh, Windows 7 and 8 as well. And don't blame Windows 10 as time marches on. Things change a little bit, so just go get your new drivers or your new installation, and you should be good. Hey, and don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. Come on back for Windows 8 and Windows 10. 
and Windows Phone 8 and Windows 10 and general how-to videos, all here to help you make the most out of your system.